Hi everyone, this is Algebra 2 Lesson 1-1b, and I will be starting at number 12 here, which is just a continuation of our notes from the last lesson, which was 1-1a, and we'll be clearing fractions and equation at the start here. So all that means is clearing fractions is that in this specific example, I have a 5 ninths and I have a 2 thirds on the right hand side there. I want to go ahead and get rid of those fractions so that my equation looks like the equations that we saw in our lesson of 1-1a, which is a lot easier to solve than trying to solve this in fraction form. It can be done, uh, but this specific example wants us to clear the fractions, so let's go ahead and do that. So to clear these fractions, I need to get rid of basically that denominator on either side, meaning I need to somehow get rid of the 9 and somehow get rid of the 3. In order to do that, we need to multiply both sides of the equation, meaning the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side of the equation. Both sides by the LCD. LCD. What the LCD is, if you remember, we have to now reach back into our previous understanding of what we learned in mathematics dating back to even middle school. It's the lowest common denominator, the lowest common denominator, meaning it's the denominator, the number that both numbers in the denominator can both go into. So we have nine. What numbers go, what numbers multiply to go in the nine? Well, one and nine. So nine would be uh, the lowest common for that. And then we have one and three, but three doesn't work because nine doesn't go into three. But we could do three times three, three times three does go into nine, and nine does go into nine one time. So that's gonna be the lowest common multiple, or excuse me, denominator. If you're struggling with this, I recommend you hop just over to YouTube really quick. And there are, uh, if you just type in what or how to find the lowest common denominator, you'll have a bunch of videos. I think the first one that comes up is even math antics that a lot of uh, middle school kids watch. It's very easy to grasp. And I would say hop into that, or there's other instructors uh, instructors, professors that will do a quick review, maybe a couple minutes that will help you find it very quickly. Uh, but for the sake of keeping the lesson short, uh, or hopefully this video short, uh, we're going to jump right into and solve this. So I'm going to bracket off the left hand side of the equation and the right hand side in parentheses because my lowest common denominator is 9. And if I multiply the left hand side by 9, I must multiply the right hand side by 9. Now what happens is if I distribute, if I distribute this 9 to the 5 ninths and this 9 to the 7 and then that to there, right, which we're just multiplying the right hand side, then I can get rid of these fractions. So don't forget that this is over 1, but if I cross cancel here, I'll make these over 1 to help you, if I cross cancel this 9, the 9's disappear. So all I'm left with is 5x. This 9 on the left was only when I cross-canceled those. Maybe this will help a little bit better. Let me do this. If I had 9 over 1 times 5 ninths x plus, and then I need to distribute that 9, 9 times 7 equals 2 thirds times 9 over 1. So hopefully this helps a little bit better. This is probably a more presentable way of explaining this. Now when I cross cancel these nines, I'm just left with 5x. Since I distributed that nine to the seven, I have a plus 63. And now we can cross cancel over here. That's a one, that's a three. I am left with six. Now what we have done was cleared the fractions and that was the whole purpose here. And now our equation is very similar to the very first equations that were in 1-1a, where we just have a variable on the left-hand side, and we want to solve for x. So let's go ahead and solve that. This, the rest of it should be somewhat of a review, and hopefully you feel comfortable with doing these by now. These cancel to 0. We have 5x equals, this is a negative 57. You divide everything by 5, you get x equals 57 fifths. And it asked us to make sure that we don't have any decimals in our answer, and we don't. We left it in fraction form. Perfect. What I want you to do 
is find the lowest common denominator of this equation on the right hand side and solve for x from there and then select your answer in the play pause it video let's look at number 13. it says solving a linear equation with several occurrences of the variable fractional forms with monomial numerators monomial just means one mono solve for the variable simplify your answer as much as possible so we're going to be doing the same exact thing basically that we did in problem 12. It's just a different presentation. It's a different example using a linear equation. We want to find the lowest common denominator in this as well. Now, again, if you're struggling to find the lowest common denominator, please do a little bit of a review on YouTube. Again, it will take about five minutes to do, but it'll be extremely beneficial in solving these. So I want to find the lowest common denominator of six and four. The lowest common denominator of 6 and 4 is 12. And then 12. Remember, I want to distribute this 12 here, and then I want to distribute this 12 here. So I'm going to rewrite this equation for the next step. Remember, the 4 goes, and I'm left with um, 3 5u. Remember, I just cross-canceled these, and this was then a 3. The reason why I'm not cross-canceling it and showing you is because I don't want you to be confused because I still need to use that 12 to distribute to this 3 here. Minus uh, 12 times 3, or negative 3, is negative 36, equals 7u, and if I cross-cancel, it's a 6, times 6. 3 times 5u is 15u minus 36, 7u, oop, this is, uh, excuse me, this is actually supposed to be a 2, and then this is a 2, almost made a mistake, uh, 2, 7u times 2 is 14u, and now what I want to do is isolate the variable just like we did in 1-1a, how do I do that, minus 15u over here, minus 15u. That's a zero. I'm left with negative 36 equals negative 1u. How do I get rid of that negative 1? Because I want to isolate u by itself. I need to divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. And I get 36 equals u. Or u equals 36. Remember, same thing. Go ahead and solve the equation on the right-hand side following the same format of finding the lowest common denominator, then distributing it across the cancellation, and go ahead and solve for y. Let's look at problem number 14, solving a two-step equation with signed fractions. This should sound and look very similar to what we did yesterday, or I shouldn't say yesterday, but in 1-1a, depending on where we're at in our days. But notice instead of just two fractions in an equation, now we have three fractions of one half, negative nine fifths, and then negative four thirds. We're gonna do the same thing of just finding the lowest common denominator between two, five, and three. Now the lowest common denominator between two, five, and three is 30. So I'm gonna try to write this a little bit differently than we had before. I'm gonna put times 30 over one, I'm kind of squeeze it in there and then times 30 over one as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do cross cancellation. So this is 15. Try to make it not messy. If you can make yours a little bit more presentable than mine, even better. That's a one and a six, a one and then a 10. Now what I've done is I've cleared my fractions and what I'm gonna be left with is just whole numbers or a coefficient in a variable. I have one time, 15 times one, 15 V, minus nine times six, 54, equals four times 10 is, excuse me, negative four, don't forget that negative, negative four times 10 is negative 40. Now, as I keep repeating myself, this equation just has a variable on the left-hand side, very similar to what we saw in 1-1a. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I must do to the other. It's a balancing beam. That's 0, 15v, 
equals, what is negative 40 plus 54? Good, 14. You divide by 15, divide by 15, and that's a V, <laughs> equals 14 over 15. And that is our answer. What I want you to do is, like all the other ones, do the right-hand side on your own, and then move on to number 15. Number 15 says solving a linear equation with several occurrences of the variable. Variables are on both sides and fractional coefficients. Remember, a coefficient is the number in front of the variable. For example, uh, this 7, negative 7 thirds is the coefficient. This is not a coefficient. This is a coefficient. This is not a coefficient. So hopefully you're able to see that. Just a quick example of what a coefficient is. All this is saying is that uh, we have multiple variables on each side of the equation. But just like uh, problems 13 and 14, what we're going to do is find the lowest common denominator and then do the exact same thing where we want to clear the fractions by, by uh, cross cancellation. So the lowest common denominator for number 15 of 3, 4, and 4 is 12. So I'm going to multiply this portion and this portion this portion and then this number make sure I have the negative in there I'm gonna multiply all these by 12 so this is gonna be multiplied by 12 over 1 this is gonna be multiplied by 12 over 1 <laughs> this one's gonna be multiplied by 12 over 1 and this is gonna be multiplied by 12 over 1 Sometimes it helps doing these in different colors so that it doesn't get too messy. The biggest part that you don't want to mess up on is attaching these negatives to your answers. So uh, this, oop, 12 over 1, uh, this is a 4, this turns into a 1. 3 goes into 12 four times. So again, there's a negative. Basically, I have 4 times negative 7, which is negative 28w, plus... That turns into a 1. 4 goes into 12 three times. I am just left with 3 times 3, which is 9, equals. This cancels. 4 goes into 12 three times. I have negative 5. Negative 5 times 3. W. I should say negative 5W times 3 would be more appropriate. I have negative 15W. And then since this is just over 1, there is no cross cancellation. I just have negative 5 times 12, which is negative 60. Now, all this is, is we have uh, a, a, an equation where we have several occurrences of the variable, where the variable is on both sides of the equation. All this does is should attach you to 1-1a now to our prior understanding. The hope is now that you're assimilating this information, meaning you're making connections to prior understanding, prior lessons. The hope is that while you're doing this, this part of the uh, question is just a review at this point. That's the hope. So let's isolate the variable by moving it to one side, plus 28w. Now, again, you could have added 15w here. You could have added 15w on the right-hand side and then added 15w on the left-hand side and solved it that way you will still come to the same answer. So it's completely up to you on how you want to solve it. You can either start with the left side or the right side. Uh, I am left with 9 on the left-hand side. Negative 15w plus 28 is 13w. And then I'm just going to bring out down that negative 60 or minus 60. I'm going to add 60 to both sides. I have 69 equals, oh, let's clean that up a little bit. 69 equals 13w. You divide, I'm left with 69 over 13. Try the one on the right-hand side by finding the lowest common denominator between 2, 5, and 5, and then go ahead and solve for the variable of u. Number 16. Solving a linear equation with several occurrences of the variable fractional forms with binomial numerators. Binomial, think of a uh, bicycle. Bi means two, uh, hence a binomial. Okay, we're doing the exact same thing. 
find the lowest common denominator. Hopefully at this point in this lesson, you're seeing how important the lowest common denominator is. I'm not going too far in depth of covering the lowest common denominator because this is information, again, that's coming from the middle school. You should have seen it in 1-1A, 1-1A, uh, Algebra 1, uh, 1A, and then 1B, as well as Algebra 2 here. And worst case scenario, please do a refresher through YouTube. That will help tremendously on this specific part of the lesson, as well as your quizzes and exams. So let's find the lowest common denominator of uh, 4 and 7. Uh, the lowest common denominator of 4 and 7 is uh, 28. 28. So let's multiply everything by 28. I always just put it over 1. So 28. So uh, 4 goes into 28 7 times. So I'm going to have 7 times 3u minus 9 plus 7 goes into 28, 4. So I'm going to have 4 times 2u plus 8 equals, and then 2 times 28 is uh, it's 56. Now what I want to do is do the distributive property here. And there, which you should be familiar with. 7 times 3u is 21u. 7 times 9 or 7 times negative 9 is negative 63. 4 times 2u is 8u. 4 times a positive 8 is a positive 32 equals 56. Now we want to combine like terms. We went over this in 1-1a. This is a like term with 8u and then this term is a like term with that term. And so what we're going to do is combine these. Um, I'm going to rearrange this so you can visually see the like terms together. 21u plus the 8u. Notice I'm attaching that positive sign in front of the 8. And then I'm going to do uh, minus 63 plus 32 equals 56. You don't, have to, you don't have to rearrange this. I'm just doing this as a visual to help you see. 21u plus 8u, 29u. Negative 63 plus 31 is negative 31 equals 56. We want to get rid of that 31 by adding it to both sides. Oop. Adding it to both sides of the equation. That turns into zero, you're left with 29u equals 87. 29u equals 87. Divide by 29, you're left with a fairly big fraction, 87 over 29. If you were to simplify that, because it asks us to, right, simplify your answer as much as possible, you get three. Actually, let me do that a little bit cleaner. I'm going to put it u equals 3. Okay. Try the one on the right-hand side and find your answer within the play posit multiple choice. Number 17. Solving equations with 0, 1, or infinity many solutions. All right, so let's kind of break this down because it shows us right here possible solutions meaning these are our possible answers. What no solution means is you're going to have your answer not equal to, meaning it's going to be different. The number on the left-hand side is going to be different than the number on the right-hand side of your equation. And hopefully we have an example here to show you what no solution looks like. A variable equals a number. This is just x, I'm going to use an example, a variable being x equals a number. Again, that variable could be a, b, c, d, e, f, g, all the way through the alphabet, who knows. And then all numbers are solutions. What that means is your answer is going to come out to be a, um, a number. The number on the left-hand side or the right-hand side is going to equal and be the same number that's on the right-hand side of the equation. 
So no solution, again, is the number on the left-hand side of the equation and the number on the right-hand side of the equation are not the exact same number, meaning you might have a uh, 2 equals 1. That's going to be, your answer is going to be no solution. X equals any number, that's right there, a variable equals a number, which we have been doing for one, problems 1 through 16. And then all numbers are solutions. That's where, say, you got like 2 equals 2, 5 equals 5. So your answer wouldn't be 2 equals 2. Excuse me, your answer is going to be um, all numbers or all real numbers or all numbers are solutions. I'm okay with you putting all numbers are solutions. Let's go ahead and tackle this problem. So first what we have here is I see we have parentheses. So what I'm going to need to do automatically is I need to distribute that 2. I need to distribute this 3. So let's go ahead and do that. 2 times w is 2w. 2 times 2 is 4 plus w. 3 times w is 3w. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 6. Now I want to do the work of combining like terms. I need to combine the like terms on the left-hand side of the equation and then combine like terms on the right-hand side of the equation. So this is a like term over here, and then it looks like these are like terms over here. So let's go ahead and solve those. I'm not going to rearrange this one. We've done that already. 2w plus w is 3w, and I still have the 4 left over. 3w, uh, negative 3 plus 6 is a positive 3. Now I have a... Uh, variable on both sides of the equation. So I can do the left-hand side or the right. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to do the right-hand side minus 3w. Interesting. So three, positive 3w minus 3w is 0. 3w minus 3w is 0. So I don't have a variable. That's possible. 4 equals 3. The question is, does 4 equal 3? Let's strike through that equal sign. That means it does not. 4 does not equal 3. My possible solutions, if I look at my notes up there, is the number on the left-hand side, this 4, is different than this 3. Hence, my answer is no solution. And that's what you put as your answer. I'm going to box it. Please box your answers as well. And then do the number, or should I say example, on the right-hand side. Again, you might have the same example where it might be a no solution. It might be a, a variable equals a number. If you get a variable, um, I'm going to use x equals a number, even though this is using the variable of y, uh, what you're going to have is called one solution. And even better yet, let me put it up at the top. That way it's consistent. Uh, this is called, you'll have one solution. So yes, the answer is one solution, but it's also whatever that variable equals. It could be x equals 2, x equals 3. Um, or you might have all numbers uh, are, are the solutions. So try that one on your own. See if you could find the answer choice within the play pause it video, just like all the other ones. All right, now we get into something a little bit different here. We're doing the work of translating, uh, meaning we're taking a word sentence and we're making it into an expression or an equation. Well, what's the difference, right? What's the difference between uh, an algebraic expression and an equation? Well, an expression does not have the equal sign. It doesn't have an equation, the equation symbol. So let's read this. It says, translating a sentence into one-step equation. Interesting. Okay, so we know that there's going to be an equal sign, right? It has the word uh, equal, or should I say equation, actually. So we know it's going to have an equal sign. Translate each phrase into an algebraic expression. Well, that's technically wrong, right? We know it's wrong because an equation and expression are two different things. So this is, let's strike this out. This is actually incorrect. So what we want to do is translate, translate, the sentence, the sentence into, oop, be helpful if I can write 
into a one step equation. And again, forgive me for my penmanship, it is kind of hard to write on an iPad. So let's look at the example that they gave us here, and I'm going to use a different color just to underline some things. So it says here, the product of Vita's or Vita's height and 2 is 32. So the product of Vita's height and 2 is 32. So I'm trying to reach back in my own memory to see how I could take these words and make sense of them. I believe it was in middle school, you learned that addition was the word sum, S-U-M, and then minus was the difference, multiplication was product, hopefully now you're recalling these vocabulary terms, and then division was quotient, quotient. There are other terms that are used to describe some, like addition, right? There are some other terms like uh, minus or subtract or difference that represent minus. There are other words like multiplication, product that represent multiplication, so on and so forth. It's vital to have these because it says the product. The product, which I automatically know represents multiplication. Avida's height, okay, height and two is 32. But it says use the variable V to represent Vida's height. So let's go back to the black here. I'm going to use V equals Vita's height. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to create a one-step equation. Well, I have multiplication here, and I have to use V. So the product of Vita's height, the product, V times something. The product of Vita's height and 2, that tells me it's going to be Vita's height times 2 is, is, is equal to 32. Or you could write it this way. V times 2 is 2V equals 32, right? Whenever I said there was a coefficient or a number in front of a variable, in actuality what that's saying is 2 times V. Very similar to when you just have a variable by itself, what is that saying? One times whatever that variable is. There's an invisible one. So the coefficient here is two in front of the V. And then of course you can solve, for, solve from there, but it's not asking us to solve, it's just asking us to create and translate uh, a sentence, a word sentence into an equation. So let's look at the next one here. It says translating a phrase, oh should I, I should back up here, I should back up, it says, uh, this one, try on your own here. Try on your own, find your answer in the play posit. So number 19, translating a phrase into a two-step equation, or equation, expression, expression. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Translate each phrase into an algebraic expression. Okay, so I know that there's not going to be an equal sign. What does this look like? 22 more than twice uh, Mabel's score Use the variable m to represent Mabel's score. So I automatically know m equals, and I just do this to help me. Obviously, it's already written, but I know it's going to be Mabel's score. So let's look at it. It says 22 more than, that's addition, more than twice Mabel's score. What's twice? That's obviously 2, right? So more than is addition, twice is 2. Mabel's score. What's Mabel's score represent? M. There you go. That's an expression. Notice that there is no equal sign there. You can also write this as 2m plus 22. 2m plus 22. What if it said 22 less than twice Mabel's score? Well, then you would have a um, minus sign, correct? Minus sign. Minus 22. Minus 22. So that would look like this, right? Say so you had 22 less than M. 
that would be m minus 22 because it's less than it's 22 less than the variable try this one on your own and find your answer moving on to number 20 we have writing a one-step expression for a real world situation translate each phrase into an algebraic expression Again, when you see the word expression, make sure that you don't have an equal sign. These can be kind of difficult, but once you kind of see the pattern and repetition, it becomes a lot easier. So let's read it, and let's read it slowly. Last year, there were K pies baked for the bake sale. So right off the bat, reading this first sentence, we don't know how many pies were baked last year. So we'll say 2019. We have no idea. It's just a variable. It says this year there were 194 pies baked. We'll say 2020, there is 194 pies baked. Using K, the variable, write an expression for the total number of pies baked in the two years. So last year, last year equals K pies. This year, we know how many they baked, which was 194. And what is it asking us? Asking us to write an expression for the total number of pies baked in two years. So what that is, is last year plus this year. And that's it. Now we took um, our word sentence, or should I say sentences, our real world situation, and converted it to an algebraic expression. We don't need to solve it. All we're doing is translating this paragraph. Try the one on your right-hand side. Writing an equation to represent a proportional relationship. So we're on 21. It says Salma purchased N notebooks, meaning we don't know how many notebooks, hence it's a variable. It could be 500 notebooks, it could be two notebooks, it could be one notebook, we don't know. They were $5 each. Write an equation to represent the total cost C that Salma paid. This is very much a real world situation. I saw this a lot in accounting. In accounting. Also, I worked at Staples in college. Uh, and this was something that was very familiar where somebody would call up and say, hey, I need 100 notebooks. Um, how much are the notebooks going for? What's my total cost? I'd have to go and look it up, see, how, oh, well, they're going for, we'll say a penny each, you know, and then, you know, extrapolate that over 100. So this is a real world example. I've seen it before. Let's read it again. Salma purchased N notebooks. So N equals number of notebooks. They were $5 each. Each. Each is like per, P-E-R, like $5 per notebook. And what that is really referencing is to multiply, multiplication. So... It says $5 each, so $5 for each notebook, 5 times n, equals C. So we don't, know the, we don't know how many notebooks, but we know that they're $5 each. So however, if she wanted one notebook, then her C total cost is $5. If it was two notebooks, then her total cost would be $10, and so forth and so forth. But again, it's not asking us to do that. Try the one on the right-hand side. Translating a sentence into a multi-step equation. Translate each sentence into equation. I see that. That means I need an equals sign. So the sum, the word sum means addition, of two times a number and five is. So I see two times, again, times is multiplication, times, I'll put a period, so I'm not going to use the multiplication symbol because you might get confused with an X. Two times a number um, use the variable C, okay, to represent unknown number. So I can't use A, I can't use B, I can't use E, F, D, any of those things um, or variables. I have to use C, so a number C. And 5, and 5, so the sum of two numbers and 5 is equals 4. So this might look really messy, but I have 2 times C, so 2C plus 5, right? Because it says the sum of 2 times a number and 5. So 2 times a number and 5, we have, to, we have to sum those together. We have to put those together. 
equals 4. And I'm going to rephrase that again, and I'm going to put a different color. It's saying the sum of 2 and 5. 2 times a number and 5. So it's saying that we're summing these two together. I know some of you might get this off the bat, but some people it takes a little bit to kind of make that connection and click it together. Try this one on your own, the one on the right-hand side. And that is going to be the conclusion of 1-1b. I hope all of you are studying and working very hard at what you're doing, and I will see you in the next video.